Welcome to the Bath, Fizz, and Foam YouTube channel. My name is Robin French-Smith, and today we're going to talk about the Kata Love Boat. Now, the Kata Love Boat is one of the oldest Kata designs that I know of. I believe it was like kind of one of their first, whoops, butterfingers, <laughs> one of their first mold designs. And it was designed to be similar to the Lush Love Boat design. Like that's what it was, uh, it was modeled after the Lush Love Boat design. What are you doing? What? What are you doing? I just woke up and I'm recording. Like, I'm working. What are, you, what are you doing? I'm trying to stop you from saying that. From saying what? That name. What, what name? K Kata? No, not that name. Love, love boat? Stop. You know what I'm talking about. I literally don't. I just woke up. I don't have makeup on. I'm trying to edit video. Can you please fill me in on what your current psychosis is? <sighs> you know, L-O-S-H. <sighs> Just help me, help me. Do you mean Lush? Yeah, I mean them. You know they're trying to stop us small makers from making things. Are, are they though? Yeah, they have patents and copyrights and trademarks and they don't want us small makers to be making anything. Uh, <laughs> Literally, I don't have time to deal with this today. Um, that's not true. You can make things and you can say the name Lush. Ah! Don't say it. Don't say what? Lush? <laughs> Is it like Beetlejuice? Like if I say their name three times fast, they're going to pop in here and appear? You're going to bring them down on us. Oh, God. Lush, Lush, ah! Lush. Like Bloody Mary? <laughs> Anyway, back to this. Anyway, after that weird interruption, here we are back making bath bombs. So I'm preparing a batch of, uh, this is a half batch of our high humidity bath bomb recipe that you can find on our website, bathfizzandfoam.com. Um, and I will obviously leave links in the description for where you can find that uh, recipe if you're interested in it. And I'm using Blue One Lake to color these bath bombs. As you can see, it gives me a really pretty color. I kept in all this mixy mixy on the side so that you guys could see like how long sometimes it takes to mix because that was sped up, you know, quite a bit. So, I mean, it looked fast, but you know, it was sped up. So um, I think that's like definitely a mistake that people tend to make is not letting their mix just mix long enough. And um, you're looking for the mix to kind of start pulling away from the side in big, chunks kind of um, so I'm transferring this I transferred it out of my bowl so I could scrape the sides putting it back into my bowl adding my binder sometimes I add my binder by hand uh, sometimes I mix it in the mixer just kind of depends if I mix it in the mixer uh, it's a little bit drier of a mix so it kind of just depends you know what I'm going for and uh, making sure to scrape the beater but also making sure that once I scrape the beater then I mix all that in because that beater had like a little bit of extra moisture on it and I'm taking the mix squashing it between my hands um I probably did a drop test but I probably didn't show you just so I can you know get a really good feel for this so I'm going to take the top portion which has that kind of deep indent part and I'm going to lightly fill this don't worry I'll get I'll get more focused at like I'll bring the more to the actual center. I'm sorry, it's off center right now. Anyway, um, so I lightly filled it. Didn't really pack anything in, just kind of lightly filled it, made a little, I don't know, 
valley or something like made a little space for my embeds and then lightly packed it in now the one thing i do like to do with this mold and sometimes just press through molds in general where that's like where both pieces press all the way through and can slide through the shell really easily is i slide the piece down off the shell a little bit to give myself like a little extra room when it comes to filling it so i mean it's not necessary but it is something i like to do just to make sure i have a nice healthy saturn lip and uh, knocking all the stuff off the side so I make a slightly less mess than I normally do. <laughs> Sometimes it's like it's give and take when it comes to mess. Um, tapping the bottom, I want to remove the bottom first and I have a nice, <laughs> have a nice smooth bottom. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, the bottom's nice and smooth though. And then removing the outer shell and tip a tap in all the way around. Now, the one thing I would say about this mold is, like, like I said, this is an older design. So um, sometimes when you're pulling up, pulling that top piece away, the heart will kind of, for, for mine, the heart would kind of like chip because I wasn't pulling straight up. And that's because it has super straight sides. Um, it's not really like beveled very much which is fine, it's not a problem. This is actually, like so, sometimes some of the older molds are a little bit more problematic and I'm not gonna even like whitewash it, you know, sometimes the older molds are a little bit more difficult to use because, I mean, think about it, they, like the Kata's pretty much invented printing 3D presses, hand presses for bath bombs. So it was kind of a new concept all around. And so there was some learning that they've had to do. And over the years, you know, their newer molds get better and better and better. So, um, you know, but this, so, so sometimes some of the older ones can have trouble, but this one, I didn't have that much trouble with it, unfortunately. And I say unfortunately, because like, if I don't have trouble with it, it makes it harder for me to sometimes help other people who are having trouble with it. I would say that that bottom, it's not straight, okay? You can see that it has a nice rounded beveled curve, but it is very deep. And so sometimes when a mold is really deep, that suction that is there between the bath bomb and the mold, that suction is really, really intense. And so sometimes you have to make sure that you're tapping a lot to get it to come out. Um, but that's all you got, you know, just make sure that you're tapping. And then if your mix is having um, issues, feeling too dry or something like that, you could always try adding more oil. I would always add more oil before I would add more binder. A lot of people tend to be afraid to add oil to their bath bomb mix. Like they're afraid that it's going to react their bath bombs. It's not, oil is not gonna react your bath bombs. You're gonna be fine with that. Um, so, you know. Um, so yeah, I don't know if maybe when people were having trouble with this, maybe they were, uh, you know, filling the bottom first and then filling the top because I could see that could be difficult to get that top portion. <laughs> what? That top portion. Oh my God. <laughs> it's that blonde, that blonde bombshell coming back through. Anyway, uh, that top portion uh, to be all the way filled up. But I think, you know, doing it like this, you're going to get the best results in my opinion. And I did mark, I don't know if I, I think I point this out at some point, but I did mark the top mold, you can see it has an X on it so that I know which piece is my top and which is my bottom. Um, Cause that makes it easier when I'm unmolding. And if the heart breaks a little bit as I'm pulling up, if I don't pull straight up, right? That little heart would like kind of chip or crack a little bit. You can just tap those details down. So when you have like a detail that kind of breaks away like that, you can just tap it down and it'll be fine. Like that happens all the time. I do that all the time. And if you paint your bath bombs like I do, you really can't even tell once you paint them. And then if you don't paint them, um, when they're finished, a lot of times you can just take your finger and gently rub where it's cracked and it will kind of smudge it and erase the crack. So, you know, I don't think that it's not the end of the world. And if your bath bomb has a few little flaws on it, like I wouldn't give up or I definitely wouldn't discount it. I don't think that it's worth that but I mean if you feel like compelled to do that then fine but I'm just saying that's just me um I did try using embed bars in this mold and it did not work now I'm not 
I don't think it's much of a secret. I am not a huge fan of embed bars. I just don't think... <sighs> It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. If you like them, you like them. Oh, I did right here. I did. I was able to use one embed bar. I think this one works, but the other one I tried does not work. So it's just a lot of risk, in my opinion. It's a lot of risk to make the embed bar in general. And then it, half the time when you put it inside the bath bomb mold, they break anyway. So it's like, why did I spend so much time making this ding dang embed bar for it to break? It's kind of frustrating, but whatever, it's fine. If you're into them, you're into them. And I totally get being into them. It's just not my thing, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, here's a different view, side view to kind of give you a better idea of what I'm doing. Um, you see how I'm like really allowing the mix to be overfilled. And I don't know if you can peek right there at the bottom near my hand, but I did kind of pull the top of the, or the bottom, whatever that piece that's already in there in the shell i kind of pulled it away from the shell just a little bit so i could have a thicker saturn ring so anyway and then just pressing just normal pressing sometimes sometimes i have found that pressing especially like a small mold this is like a three ounce mold i want to say um sometimes pressing like that on the table is a problem and so you know if you're having problems with this mold maybe just try hand pressing hand pressing only and then not table pressing and right there you see i go to pull up and it uh, wouldn't pull away and that was because i hadn't slid the bath bomb up through the shell quite enough so i needed to uh, make sure that that whole bottom portion was like absolutely released and you can just flip it like that don't be scared don't be scared you can just flip it and then tippity tap 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 use your favorite there's like a there's like a goldilocks zone <laughs> when it comes to spoons um where i found like if i use a spoon that's too big i hit it too hard if i use a spoon that's too small i don't get enough whacking so you gotta get your best whacking spoon you can know, find that um and then you'll get the right thing and then the other thing i don't know oh okay so my mix i guess felt a little bit dry so here i am just remixing it kind of activating it and it looks like i'm just mixing it but i'm like squeezing it really hard between like in my hand squeezing it really hard just trying to activate it again <clears throat> sorry just trying to activate it again and get it you know squishable and workable uh filling the mix gently lightly filling the mix i'm not packing it in i'm not even packing it into that area where the cabin is on the boat um just not doing that if you find that you need to do that that's fine but i think a lot of times people just really <laughs> they just really pack their molds like really hard and then they wonder why it doesn't work you don't have to do that and i know it's like it's goes against probably everything that you've seen especially when it comes to like <sighs> there's like a lot of misinformation bad information about bath bombs out there so you've probably seen people say like oh you gotta just like pack it and pack it back you don't have to do that and they're still gonna be rock hard trust me these are really hard little suckers when they're done so you'll be fine um i think one of these i accidentally slide the whole thing through maybe if you do that if you accidentally slide the whole bath bomb through the shell instead of like keeping it with that little shell around it and then you can kind of use that to flip it if you accidentally do that then you can use a piece of cardboard or something like that to flip it out um just kind of depends on how you want to do it so but i did find if i if i reached okay these look pretty good right I did find, so like that heart there on the end is crushed. I think I ended up redoing it because, oh, I'm, is there more? Why is there so much? I'm sorry, I just feel like this video is never ending. I feel like I should have just cut all this. I'm leaving it because I'm already doing the audio, which means I'm past this point, but feel free to just speed forward. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, okay, so the hearts, sometimes the hearts were like, crunching <laughs> I was like breaking the hearts so I noticed that when I was lifting up with one hand I was breaking the hearts and if I lifted up with two hands the hearts were much less likely to break and to come out crisp and clean and so it's just a matter of like me lifting straight up versus me slightly lifting it to the side as I lift up and then cracking it so you know it's just 
um, it's just a thing. I think I'm gonna pause this and I think I'm gonna edit this out because this is like really boring. It's just last, just feels like it lasts forever. And a little more editing never hurts anybody. What am I doing? Oh my God. So slow. Do -do 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 -do. I think I'm just trying to show you guys. Look, everything is fine. It's gonna be okay. Bath bombs aren't that serious. They're gonna make your day. When you finally get them down, then you're gonna be so happy. So just go with it because you're gonna be okay. The end. Okay, yeah. One hand crushed the heart. <laughs> crushed it. Um, I, I do end up like redoing it and some of them i don't know if i showed it though but i did end up redoing them I'm not gonna lie so i could get like perfect hearts and then my mix was like really dry so it was like a rush but i'll probably just cut this out anyway it's a lot there's just a lot i'll probably oh 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 look i did i did unmold the whole thing so this is what you do for you unmold the whole thing okay put your hands all the way around the edge and then flip it over to that i mean it's just easy just make sure you're like gripping the edge as you flip it over I guess I can't cut it. Now I have to leave all that stupid shit in where I'm like singing and like. <laughs> ah. <laughs> anyway, I'm almost done with this batch. If you fast forwarded, I don't blame you. I actually, okay, I, I've had this uh, mold like forever and I don't think that I've ever, I know that I had tested it before because somebody asked about it. And so I think that's why I got it because somebody asked about it. Also, I wanted to make like an anime theme set at one point. And so this would have been like my Ponyo boat because Ponyo loves Sosuke. Anyway, this would have been my Ponyo boat, but um, I didn't end up doing it. So I, the anime set, but I, I'm sure that's why I had this mold. So I had tested it a long time ago. I don't think I've ever done like a full batch of this mold and it is actually really cute. And I also like that it's small. I've been trying to make smaller bath bombs lately anyway, just to like give people a break on the pricing because it gets expensive, you know. Uh, here I am going to paint these. So I have a bright red and orange and a blue. That red is most likely Queen of Hearts. That orange is Garfield from Muddy Soap Co. And that blue is True Blue from TKB. Now I decide pretty quickly on that I don't like that red. It's a little bit too much. This like first one was my tester one. And this first one also is the one that has the embed bar in it. So I know that it's different from the rest. I actually also added a little bit of polysorbate 80 into that blue mica, um, just to help prevent it from staining. Um, so anyway, then I added some white into that red so that I could get more of a pink color. And I definitely was more happy with that than I was with the red there. I was just, I don't know. It looks fine actually now that I look at it, but at the time I just was not feeling it. And then I also decided to just make this take even longer by <laughs> not painting the cabin solid. I wanted the cabin to have little windows. I don't know. It just felt right to me in the moment. And so, um, painting bath bombs is really relaxing for me, so I don't mind the extra time. Like this is actually my favorite part of making bath bombs is painting them. So, you know, if you don't like painting them, you wanna airbrush them and all that stuff, you could do that. But this is extremely relaxing for me. This is like my Zen place when I'm painting bath bombs. And I could sit here and watch X-Files or Supernatural or Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I don't know, I just like watch my shows forever and paint and then I have like a lot of fun times and then sometimes it's funny because whatever I was painting whatever I was watching when I was um, painting the bath bomb when I look at the bath bomb it will remind me of that it's kind of fun uh, except I was telling my patreon <laughs> our patreon people how the other day I watched I was listening to a true crime and they were talking about leaving neverland which is the michael jackson movie and i was like oh i've never seen that so i decided to watch it while i was painting something else and oh my god i was not ready for it i thought i was ready for it. i was not ready for it it was a lot it was too much for me so anyway sometimes that does happen too here are the little love boats i took one of the ones that had like kind of the most damaged heart use that one for my tester and you can see in the water i don't think that these float Floating is just, it's so 
unpredictable. So I never guarantee that my bath bombs are gonna float or whatever. Like I just tested the Cthulhu ones that I made for, I don't know, something. God dang it, hope y'all didn't hear that notification on my phone. Anyway, um, I just painted, I just did the Cthulhu ones and they floated. Totally unexpected, but those floated. <laughs> totally unexpected, but those floated and they were really heavy um, and felt really dense. And so I thought for sure, oh, this boat is floating Then just shut me up. <laughs> but it doesn't float right off the bat. Sometimes like you put it in the water really gently and it floats right off the bat and it's good. Sometimes you have to like keep encouraging it to float and it's kind of annoying. Uh, the color for this one was amazing. Oh my God. The combination of the light blue bath bomb and then these two colors, I actually gave the um, uh, our Patreon, which I'll have their names. Oh wait, I already no, it's just, just ignore me. Anyway, um, the for our Patreon, I included the formulation for how to get that gorgeous mango yellow color. That is like, oh, it's so good, and that fabulous teal for those embeds, uh, that was part of the Patreon this last month. So if you're interested in that, you could join Patreon. You could also come to Bath, Fizz and Foam, Bath Bomb and Bubble Bar support group on Facebook. We do live Make With Me Mondays every Monday, unless I'm sick, which I was this week, but now I'm not, so I'm doing this. Um, and you could also come to our website, bathfizzandfoam.com. We have like bunches of recipes. We have blog posts. You can learn how to make colors. We also have like other like infusions. We've done a lot of infusions this year. Um, there's a study in blue and a study in brown. So a bunch of different color studies so you can learn how to make, make colors. And now here we go. Here are the Patreon BFFs for the month that I made this. Uh, it might have changed by now. So if you're a new Patreon and you don't see your name, just wait, I'll put you back on there. So, um, you know, I'm sorry. I try to do the best I can though. I'm doing the best I can. Anyway, I just want to thank our Patreon so much. I really like appreciate them so much you guys are the best and your support is amazing so thank you so much um and as always happy making